Why do some cyclists ride harder, recover faster, and seem to go forever, while others burn out halfway through a ride? The answer might lie in something most riders barely think about, lactate. Now, if you're wondering what even is lactate, you're not alone. Most people only know it as the stuff that makes your legs burn during a tough climb or sprint. But here's the truth. Lactate isn't some toxic waste product. It's a powerful energy source. And knowing how your body uses it can completely transform the way you train, ride, and race. In this video, you'll learn what lactate really is, what lactate threshold means, and how understanding just one number, your lactate threshold, can unlock better endurance, smarter training, and even help you avoid bonking on long rides. So if you're ready to train more intelligently, boost performance, and finally make sense of all those training zones, let's dive in. What is lactate and why does it matter? Let's start with the basics. Lactate is produced in your muscles when your body breaks down carbohydrates for energy. This process is called glycolysis, and it happens whether you're riding easy or going full gas. For a long time, lactate was blamed for soreness and fatigue. But that's outdated science. In reality, lactate is not the cause of muscle pain. In fact, it's used by your muscles, your heart, and even your brain as a fast and efficient fuel source. So why does lactate get such a bad reputation? Because when lactate leaves your muscle cells, it often brings along hydrogen ions. And those hydrogen ions are what make your muscles feel acidic and heavy. They're the real reason you feel that burn, not the lactate itself. And here's something even more interesting. The more your body can use lactate effectively, the longer and stronger you can ride. Why lactate matters in cycling. In cycling, performance is deeply tied to how your body produces and uses energy. And that's where lactate becomes incredibly useful. Your lactate threshold is the point at which your body produces lactate faster than it can clear it. Once you cross this threshold, lactate and hydrogen ions start to build up. And that's when fatigue hits. Stay below your lactate threshold and you can ride for hours. Push above it and the clock starts ticking. This makes lactate threshold a critical marker for endurance athletes. It helps define your training zones, determine your pacing strategy, and assess how efficiently your metabolism is working. The two thresholds, LT1 and LT2. In sports science, there are actually two key thresholds. LT1, or the aerobic threshold, is the point where lactate levels just begin to rise. It's your fat burning zone, ideal for long, steady rides that build endurance. LT2, also known as the anaerobic threshold, is the point where lactate production and clearance are in balance. This is the maximum intensity you can sustain without accumulating lactate. LT2 is often around 4 millimoles per liter of blood, but it varies between individuals. Some riders hit it at lower levels, others higher. Go above LT2 and lactate builds rapidly. Your performance starts to drop. Stay just below it and you're working right at your edge, the sweet spot for performance and improvement. FTP, VO, 2 max, and lactate threshold. So how do you measure your lactate threshold? The gold standard is a step test performed either in a lab or at home using a lactate meter. You ride in steady five minute intervals, increasing power each time and take a small blood sample at the end of each stage. This gives you an exact look at how your lactate levels respond to intensity. But that's not always accessible, which is where FTP comes in. Functional threshold power is an estimate of your maximum sustainable power over 60 minutes. It's often used as a proxy for lactate threshold, and while it's useful, it typically overestimates your true LT2. Why? Because with motivation, adrenaline, and fresh legs, you can push beyond LT2 for a while. But that doesn't mean it's sustainable in the long term. And then there's VO2 max, your body's maximum oxygen uptake. It's a great indicator of aerobic capacity, but it doesn't give you precise information about your sustainable power or metabolic zones. That's where lactate threshold testing stands out. 
It gives you clear, actionable data for your training. How to use lactate in your training. Now here's the practical part. How do you actually use this in your training? If you have access to a lactate meter, you can test yourself at home using a smart trainer, your bike, and an app like Ruvi. Just set up a structured step test and take measurements at the end of each stage. You'll find your personal LT1 and LT2. And from that, you can build accurate training zones. Why is this important? Because lactate isn't fixed. Your threshold can shift during long rides or over the course of a training block. With regular testing, you can adjust your zones to match your current fitness instead of relying on outdated data. Here's a general guide to lactate-based zones. Zone 1, recovery, 1.0 to 1.5 millimoles per liter. Zone 2, fat metabolism and endurance, 1.5 to 2.0 millimoles per liter. Zones 3 to 4, tempo and race pace, 2 to 4 millimoles per liter. Zone 5, VO2, max efforts, anything above LT2. This structure allows you to target specific adaptations. Build aerobic endurance in zone 2. Develop race pace in zone 3 to 4. Improve oxygen uptake in zone 5. And to stay balanced, many endurance athletes follow the 80-20 rule. Spend 80% of your time in low intensity zones and 20% at or above threshold. It's one of the best ways to improve performance without burning out. Key takeaways. Let's wrap this up with four key takeaways. Lactate is always being produced, even at rest. It's not a waste product, it's an important energy source. Your lactate threshold defines the maximum intensity you can sustain. And lactate-based training is one of the most precise ways to improve endurance, power, and recovery. Whether you're a weekend warrior or a serious racer, understanding your lactate threshold helps you train smarter, ride stronger, and avoid costly mistakes on race day. So the next time you're thinking about heart rate or FTP, don't forget to ask, what's my lactate threshold?